going on everybody out there in the YouTube trucking community? Sean Cahill and Christian Brother Trucker coming at you again with a video tonight. And yeah, it's been a long time since I made a video. I know, lots of stuff's been going on, as usual, right? Oh, everything is so busy in trucking all the time. Go, 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 go. And then hurry up and wait. <laughs> but, uh, give you guys an update with Doug Andrews distributing um, I'm still working here and I'm still loving it and I was actually approached a while ago about going over to a different fleet um, fleet 6 which is regional heavy haul reefer unit and because I lived in Mountain Home they thought that I would be a good fit for that fleet and that I would just do runs from Idaho Falls, Twin Falls, Kennewick, Washington, Boardman, Oregon, Moses Lake, and basically just run that I-84 and I-90 corridor back and forth. That way I would be through the house, um, you know, be able to shut down for a reset each weekend and to be able to um, stop through the house for lunch here and there and then be able to sleep in my bed uh, every once in a while as well. So I thought I'd give it a shot. And um, so I guess they don't offer that spot to just anybody. So, you know, I was um, honored to be asked to join that fleet. And when they were talking to me about it, um, they asked me, you know, what I thought about that, that fleet opportunity. And I said, you know, I like to run a lot of miles and I like to run OTR. Um, I'm okay with not being home. Um, as often as long as I can get the miles and try to maximize my paychecks because at the end of the day my trade-off is is that I have a lot of bills to pay and I'm a single source income for my family so um, I need to maximize my paychecks as much as possible and so I figured I'd give it a shot and see you know whether I liked it or not because I wanted to see uh, how it would be going home more often and as long as I wasn't giving up too much on on the paychecks I would be okay with it and so I switched over to a um, international Lone Star uh, with, a, with a drop axle, 550 horsepower uh, Cummins engine with an 18 speed transmission. This truck was a beast. Um, and you know, interior wise, it looks like an LT. It was a mid roof sleeper, so it was a little bit smaller. But I got everything moved into it, got it all set up, and started running on, the, on that fleet. And it was right around Thanksgiving, so they said, we'll go home. Go ahead and go home for Thanksgiving, and then we'll work you into the normal rotation uh, next week. So I went home for Thanksgiving, and then I ran some loads up to Kennewick and back, um, and then I ended up going home again on Sunday because that's the normal that's the normal day that you go home anyway. And so I ended up I think I took a day and a half. I did a 34 for Thanksgiving, and then. Or something like that and then I came in for a 34 to reset my clock to start the week off again so you know I was getting comfortable with being home more often and I basically ran a load from Boise on up to Kennewick and they ended up shutting the I-84 down because of snow and ice and so when I pulled off I called up dispatch and then I called up the, um, the customer dispatch and asked them, you know, how they wanted me to proceed. And they said, well, if the I-84 is shut down, we want you to run up the 95 and get on the 12 and head over um, to make sure that you get these drops done tonight. And so the, the first issue that I had was as I was driving at night, um, starting at like four or five or six o'clock and then driving until, you know, four, five, six o'clock, seven o'clock the next morning. Um, I'm not a big fan of driving at night, but I'm especially not a fan of driving all hours of the night with inclement weather and winter weather driving on top of that. So, um, yeah, they shut the I-84 down. I ended up going up the uh, State Highway 95 up through uh, Idaho into Washington and then shooting over the uh, US-12 in Washington. Um, and it added like five hours to the trip 
I ended up over in Union Gap. Um, so I ended up, I picked the load up at about 6. I ended up finishing my driving at 7 because I used the inclement weather uh, exemption on my logs. So I put in like 12 hours that night. Um, and it was super sketchy driving. Um, up and down mountain grades on a two-lane highway in the fog with snow and ice on these roads. And it was really sketchy. And I really didn't know the 95 that well. I haven't been up and down that, that highway um, in a big rig too many times in my life. I've been up and down that road in a car a couple times, but never in a truck. So it was really... Uh, Really nerve-wracking, really stressful. Um, I didn't have to put chains on, but you know, when you're in that that fringe weather, where you know you've got snow falling and it's melting and it's patchy, icy, and it's foggy and you can't see. You know, yeah, it's really stressful. So I got that run done, and then I went over to Moses Lake, picked up a load that was going back over to Idaho Falls, and so I picked that load up, went over the Fourth of July Pass went over lookout pass and again I didn't have to chain up but coming down it was snowing it was you know like you know that where they put the uh, the ice melt down and it's getting colder and you've got that snow pack that's on the on the road and you know you're coming down these mountain grades six percent mountain grades in the twisty turnies uh, barefoot and yeah, you're you're trying to rely on your truck to keep you slowed down. You don't want to run your jakes on full because you might go into a slide. Um, and so it wasn't too bad coming down the, the lookout pass. And then when I got from basically St. Regis, Superior, Montana, all the way over to Butte, um, it was snow and ice pack. No road salt was being put down. It was plowed, but there wasn't any any road salt or any uh, gravel on the roads for traction and so um, the whole night I was on you know snow and ice on the roads for the entire night um, I got over I had to run a <laughs> I had to run the extension the, the exemption on my logs again to get the, the load completed and I at that point I just kind of made this decision you know Montana's not properly maintaining their roads. They're not putting down gravel and they're not salting the roads to keep the ice melted off. And Oregon, I guess, started shutting down the I-84 going across the Blues and uh, down Cabbage about five years ago because of a, um, a bus accident. And so now, because they had a really bad accident and a bunch of people died, um, they just shut the whole road down the main corridor, the good road that, you know, is good to run when you get up to the blues, you put chains on, you get up over the mountain, and then you come down the other side and take your chains off and you go. Well, they're not doing that anymore. They just shut it down. And so now, in order to, to complete the run, we have to add on five hours to go up the 95 and over the 12, which is the worst road to be running on, and uh, all of this at night. And so I... I just decided, you know, when it was offered the, the Fleet 6 position, they said if it doesn't work out for you, you can just come back over to Fleet 1 and come back and run for your for your uh, your other driver manager. And so that's what I decided to do. Um, and I'm really grateful for the opportunity to, to run on a regional fleet like that. And I think that if it was in the springtime and I was able to acclimate to the to the to the schedule and to the runs and the loads and getting used to you know servicing the customers that we were running for and I didn't have to worry about the snow and the ice and the fog and then I was able to run from the spring all the way to fall and then go into winter I think I would be much more prepared and ready to be able to take on the uh, more challenging driving but to throw me in there uh, unprepared on all aspects of it, you know, to be having to deal with driving at night, having to run on snow and ice and fog, and then not know these runs, not know these customers, and not know these locations, all of this at night, you know, it, it was uh, just too much for me to 
to be able to uh, deal with all that stress all at once. And so um, I decided to come back over to Fleet One and go back OTR. And uh, you know, because if I'm OTR, I gotta co I gotta come through I-80 in Wyoming, and I gotta go down to the 70 and shoot across Colorado. So I don't, you know, I'm not exempt from running on snow and ice and bad weather. But I don't have to drive at night, and I don't have to drive all night shifts in the snow and ice up in the mountains all the time so it's an every once in a while thing you know um, I would much rather deal with that plus you know OTR I'm already acclimated to it I already know yeah you know, I already know the OTR life I'm I'm well versed in that but I'm able to run on a schedule that works better for me and I'm able to maintain um, my composure and my stress level much better um, rather than you know driving tired all the time and, and all of that so I may end up taking another try at it um, at some point next next spring summer or something like that where I can get over there and get comfortable with running on that fleet um, maybe maybe not I'm not sure I'm pretty happy o over the road on fleet one and uh, I'm hoping that I can be a trainer and train on fleet one and that would make it to where I can go home more often and uh, you know make a little bit more on my paychecks but then I can afford to go home <laughs> a little bit more often so it's always a balance between uh, home time and pay home time and pay if I go home too much I don't make as much money and so on a regional fleet like that you know weather can weather can impact you breakdowns can impact you a lot worse and if you don't get all your loads in you're gonna get a short paycheck and you can't make up for it being on a regional fleet. Um, it's a lot more difficult to, to make up for for certain little things like that. So um, again, I was grateful for the, the opportunity to run on, on that fleet, but um, I think for my sanity and for my stress levels, <laughs> I just decided to come back OTR. And they were really, uh, really understanding about that. And you know, they left the door wide open. They said, you know, if you don't like it, just go back to fleet one. I'm like, okay thank you for leaving that door open for me, you know, and not giving me a hard time about it. Um, and again, I'm not, I'm not totally opposed to, um, you know, the challenging driving like that. I think that I could do it. I think that, um, I would just go about it, kind of be eased into it a little bit slower than just thrown in there in the middle of winter, and have all of these changes all at once. For me, it was just too much. So, uh, all right, moving on to the next topic. So I did a video a while back saying, Night Swift, what are you doing? So basically, uh, I'm in touch with Jesse Jocelyn over there and he's still driving for them and he's getting ready to look at other options. So um, I really wish the best for him on that. But the terminal that I was based out of in Tulsa, Oklahoma, they had a management team. Um, there was my terminal manager, and then there was my driver manager. And my management team over there was the best management team that I had ever driven for. When I left over there, I didn't leave because of personal problems with management in any shape, in any way, shape, or form. I loved the people that I was driving for. That's the only reason why I stayed on as long as I did for the entire nine months that I was over there um, was because my management team was amazing, amazing people to work with. Well, recently, um, my fleet manager had quit. And shortly after that, the terminal manager quit and went somewhere else. And so now literally the, the Tulsa terminal does not have a terminal manager and they have a driver manager in there who's running the terminal, but he's not a terminal manager. And there's a dispatcher uh, that's dispatching um, Jesse, who is working from home. So literally you have the skeleton crew that is attempting to run this terminal and um, it's falling apart over there. And uh, it's, it's crazy to see good quality people like the terminal manager and my driver manager that was over there to 
see those kind of people quit, I've got to, you know, I sit here and I wonder why they quit. You know, I mean, aside from the obvious, and you know I've said that uh, sometimes really good people are limited by really crappy company policies and procedures that put put them in a position to where they're seeing their drivers be underpaid and mistreated and they see that the that the structure the policies and the procedures and the maintenance program and the pay is not indicative of happy drivers they're not going to want to stick around especially if they're ethical moral and they have a hard time with being privy to these policies and procedures that are making it difficult for drivers and so I think that's what happened I think that they went to different companies uh, probably seeking something a little bit better um, but yeah I was really 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 surprised to hear that my driver manager and the fleet uh, the terminal manager had left um, and nobody knows why for sure <laughs> They were pretty tight-lipped about it, but uh, so yeah. Now Jesse is working over there, trying to keep trying to keep his head above water, and it's pretty difficult for him. So he's going through a hard time. So um, you know, Jesse, keep your head up, brother. Um, God will see you through. Um, you know, some of the most difficult times I leaned on prayer and. Um, just looking to that strength from God to be able to get me through to something better to see me through it. But, you know, he's always faithful to walk with those that have faith, to walk through difficult times, and uh, he will see you through. So that's pretty much it. Um, back on Fleet One, I am on a run going down to Alabama, and that delivers on Monday. Um, Ran into some rain this morning and some snow on top of uh, Highway 30. Coming out of uh, Pocatello, going over to Kemmer. And, you know, you come across Wyoming and you go through Idaho and you come over to Wyoming. There's a Highway 30 that comes across there. And at the top of the mountain, there was some snow and ice and the snow plows were running. And, uh, so yeah, I finally made it off of there and <laughs> put in a full day, 600 miles. Uh, it's just good to be back into the groove of what I what I'm used to and um, I'm really hoping that I can uh, be approved to be a trainer here fairly shortly within another few months or so I don't know they said a year but I'm hoping that they uh, kind of take a look at some of my experience that I that I have with training I'm an experienced trainer so I'll just keep praying, <laughs> praying that I'm on the right path and praying that uh, that I'm in alignment with what God wants me on. It was really tough for me to, to step away from Fleet 6, but um, I felt really bad because I, I liked going home and I liked being closer to home, but the amount of stress and the, and the, and the, the danger level I don't know. I, I just couldn't hack it. I'll be. I'll admit it and say that uh, it was just too much for me right now at this point in my life. And um, maybe at some other point in time. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just an OTR driver. I, I love the OTR, uh, the life, the, the freedom, and the being able to recuperate from a bad day and being able to drive... Uh, not all the time, you know, I have to make deliveries at night a lot of times, you know, weird hours like this delivery I got to do, it's, it's due at like 1240 down in Alabama, but I can easily transition back into days, um, within the next couple of days after picking up my next load, I can transition back into driving during the day instead of being stuck at driving, um, primarily all at night, so... Anyway, that's pretty much all I've got. Um, so if you like this video, please like and subscribe and share. And as always, God bless you all and thanks for watching.